I'm Kevin with Gunskins. Today I'm going to be walking you through our AR-15 install. First thing we want to do is we want to get the gun good and clean. We're going to head outside and we're going to hit it with some CRC, non-chlorinated brake cleaner. Uh, we're just going to soak the gun down, scrub the recessed areas, just make sure we get it good and clean. Let's get to it. So for the AR-15, I'm using some CRC uh, non-chlorinated brake cleaner. I'm just going to soak the gun down real good, work my way down it, get everything just wet. Then I'm going to scrub the recessed areas up under the dust cover, under the shell deflector and the forward assist. And especially right here where that charging handle comes in, anywhere that oil is going to want to settle or, or be working its way through on the gun. Then I'm just going to come back up to the top and soak it down, just kind of let that stuff run off so it leaves a clean surface. From there I'm going to flip around to the other side, kind of work through the same process. So you can do the same thing using frog lube solvent or, or another gun degreaser, but you just got to make sure you take your time and scrub all the recessed areas, especially down in the rails here. We want to make sure that gets real clean and then just make sure the gun gets rinsed well so there's no residue left behind. Soak it down one more time. Then we'll let that dry ready to go. So I have my gun all clean, ready to start with the install. I have my kit out here. Uh, along with the kit, I have my razor knife, some extra blades. I have an install squeegee and that just helps to press the material down into recessed areas that I can't get my hand into. And then I have a piece of foam. And basically what I use that for is just to heat the material and press it into the real deep recessed areas and really bring the contours out. Let's get to it. Okay, so I separated out the, uh, the bulk material for the buttstock and fore end, and we're gonna set that off to the side for now. And on the kit, you're gonna see that it's numbered from one to 15, and that is obviously the order we're gonna work in. To get started, we're gonna start with the left mag. So I'll pop the mag out. We'll remove the material from the backing. Now I'm just gonna set it on the mag, centered. You can see there's a little notch at the top piece of the mag there that sits right at the edge, the back edge of the mag. If you don't like where it's at, you can pick it up, reposition it, get it where you want it. Take your fingers and just kind of work it into place. Press the material around the front. And the back. And then we'll use the heat to kind of set it and reveal the contours. It's not uncommon, especially with these recessed areas on a mag or even on the gun kit to get a little air in there. You just take the tip of your knife, poke it, or like on the 30, the zero for the P mag, that kind of stuff, just to let the air out of there. Allows the material to contour tighter and grab on. Get that piece set, move on to the right side. Same thing, center it up. See there's that little notch on the top left corner there. Just kind of press it into place. Work it around the back. Same on the front. Okay. All right. So from here, there's a couple different options. 
So if you're going to put the rail pieces on, I recommend putting those on before you put on the body pieces. It just gives a better seamless look. So if you're not going to put on the rail pieces, you can just skip that and move on to the left upper receiver number three. But we're going to do the rails. So I'm going to prop it up. Peel the piece off. So you can see the rails are cut kind of like a ladder. You just place those centered in your pick rails and just kind of press down on them as you go. While you're working it, it might help to uh, take the squeegee. Just kind of set it every so often. The handguard piece and the, uh, the receiver come together here. You got kind of this larger rail block. So we just trim it off there. And then we'll start on that after we get this all laid down. Once you get the rails in place, you hit it with heat. And we're going to take our squeegee and just fold the material under. And the same on the other side. All right, so these smaller pieces are cut individually. Just temp them up, get them where you want them. Press down with your finger. And then when we're all said and done, we'll hit it with heat and press it in with the sponge. And it is a bit tedious, but it finishes the look out nicely. If you have a longer rail than what we give you in the kit, we also have an additional quad rail kit that you can get to, to finish out the, the set. All right, so I like to pull the charging handle out of the way. It just makes it a little easier to work with. You're gonna grab your piece. Set it centered. Following that bottom line where the receiver, the upper and the lower receiver come together. Just press it into place with your finger. Just kind of pull it. You can see how it's pre-cut around that bump out there. And we'll work it in. See this handguard comes back over the receiver a little bit. So you just kind of work the material up along it and then we'll trim it off here after it cools. Gotta use the heat. So moving on to the left lower receiver, we're going to center it on the safety selector in the safety position and follow that line where the upper and lower come together. You can see how the material kind of wraps up towards the bolt release, bolt catch. Just kind of work it around the safety selector. Use the heat to set it in place. All right, so where we're coming around the back side here, you can see this pistol grip comes up around the back side of the receiver. Not all of them do that, but this one does. And that is what our kit is built to accommodate. So I'll show you how, how we modify the kit when we're installing on an A2 just to, uh, to get it to look right when we're, we're finished product. But for this particular setup, with the grip coming up behind the receiver, I'm gonna hit it with some heat, and we'll pull it around the backside here. Press it into place. All 
And I'm just gonna run my knife right between the grip and the receiver. I'll hit it with some heat and tuck that material in with my squeegee. So we're moving on to the left magwell. I'm gonna peel that up. And we're gonna place it centered on that front takedown pin and ride along that bottom line where the receivers come together. I'm just kind of work it into place with my fingers. Press that material down over there. Let me just hit this front piece with heat. Stretch it around. It's kind of like what I talked about with the mag when we were doing that. If you get a little air trapped in there, you just take the knife, pop it, and then hit it with the heat to finish it out. Grab this little piece that's cut out of there, and you can actually drop it in on top. All right, so I'm gonna set the pieces for our safety selector. This top piece, just place it centered. Like that. And this bottom piece just drops on like that. I'm gonna use the sponge to set it. Okay, so we're moving on to the dust cover. Grab this bigger piece of it, center it on that spring there. Work it up along the edges, pressing into place with your fingers. And we'll hit it with heat. Like that. And the piece for below the dust cover helps to kind of leave it on your knife. So you can tuck it up under there, kind of keep it loose, work it up in there. If you get it wrinkled, just pick it back up. You get down over the seam there, just trim away that extra. This doesn't mess with uh, your disassembly if you need to. All right, so now we're going to move on to the shell deflector here. The shell deflector is cut into two pieces. So we're gonna start with this lower piece here. We're gonna peel it off. It goes on the back side centered and just even with the top. Get where you want it. Press it into place. Hit it with heat. Moving on to the front side here, you'll see how it's cut to the contour of the shell deflector there. Just get it in place. And you just pull it around the bottom and the top. So depending on the height of your shell deflector, it may not be a bad idea to run a little relief cut at the top edge there and the top edge here. Fold that middle piece over. Okay, so we're moving on to the right upper receiver. And I like to pull the charging handle out of the way. It just makes it a little easier to get the piece in there if you're not fighting it. And then you just let's 
center this piece up, starting around the ejection port. Just press it into place with your fingers. You can see, like we encountered on the other side, this hand guard comes back over the receiver a little bit, but we can work with that as we go. It helps to hold this up with one finger and then kind of walk it through with your squeegee so you're not fighting getting it down in there. Like that. And then work back towards the shell deflector. All right, up here where we're sitting on the receiver, I'm just gonna take my knife. Just take my knife along that edge, trim it loose, and then press it down onto the receiver. All right, so we're moving on to piece number nine, which is the forward assist. And I like to center it and then roll towards the bottom and roll towards the top. All right, so we're moving on to the right lower receiver. It helps to pop this takedown pin out just slightly. Drop it over. That. Follow that receiver line. And walk it up towards the front of the mag. Or the back of the mag well there. Press it into place with your fingers. Push that pin back down. So same thing coming around the back side here. We're just going to hit it with a little bit of heat. Pull it around into place. Then we're going to trim back that way and right between the grip and the receiver. It's a squeegee to tuck it in there. All right, so we grab our piece that was cut out for that takedown pin. Use the tip of your knife, reposition it how you need it. Press it into place. Hit it with some heat. So for the mag release here, there's two parts. And we just want to take this inside part on our knife and center it around the mag release place and then press down on it. Use the heat, hit it. And then we got the top piece. Place that in there. Same thing using the knife. Into place. And then we'll move on to top piece for that magwell. So this one, we want to start centered right up here by the takedown pin. Press it, press it right along the edge there and work back towards the mag release. 
just keeping the material centered. And you can see how it centers on the, uh, the mag release there. You kind of press it over the top. Work down. Start from here, press the material back this way. All right, so you can see there's a little relief cut on the end of this piece. So you push the one top piece down. We're gonna bring this other piece in over top of it. Same thing on the bottom here. Bring that one around. This one. So bring that one around and then bring this one over top of it like that. For the rest of this detail in here, I'm gonna hit it with some heat. Press down into the top corner. And press down into the bottom corner. Okay, so moving on to the right mag well. Center it up. that front with heat. Okay, so I'm gonna hit it with heat and then we'll pull it around the front. All right, so we're moving on to our last couple pieces here, the left pistol grip. And we wanna follow this front edge. Center it up. Again, use your fingers to press it into place. Use the heat to stretch it around the front. So these are made to fit a variety of pistol grips. You're going to end up with a little bit of extra material here. You just trim it off when you're done. So onto the right pistol grip, same stuff, different day. Center it up. Press it into place with your fingers. All right, so we've let that material cool. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the excess around the bottom here. You just wanna find a straight line to blend it out.
All right, so we have our body pieces installed. We're ready to move on to the fore end. So I have my bulk sheet of material here and I'm just gonna kind of lay it up next to the gun so I can see how big of a piece I need. And then I'm just gonna cut it off a little bit oversized. I'm gonna start right up underneath the rail on the left side here. Just tuck the material up in there. Just gonna work it in with your hands. Use the heat if you need. If you get a crease or a wrinkle, you can just pick it back up, pull that tension out. Work it, keep working it around. Okay, so at this point, if you wanted to, if you had a lot of tension built up or if you were having a hard time keeping it straight, you could find a line here and either trim down the middle. You can see there's a little seam right there on this particular gun. So you could come right down the middle of it all and you could break it here and start on the other side or you can just keep rolling all the way around and trim it off at the other, other rail on the top side there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep on moving over. Okay, so I've worked the material around my top rail again on the opposite side. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my knife right in the corner there and just follow that natural line. Trim it loose. From here, I'm just going to start using the heat and the, the foam to kind of work the material in. Where, uh, where we want it. And then once we uh, get the material, you can see how it presses down into the, the cutouts there. And then we'll let it cool and we'll start trimming those out. And that is important. You wanna, you wanna use the heat to, to get the material where you want it, but you wanna allow the material to cool before you start cutting it. Otherwise it wants to stretch and pull and it just doesn't cut clean. All right, so we've let the material cool. We're going to go ahead and start cutting out these keyholes here. And you just run the blade around it. Run the blade up to it and then pull a little tension on it. Bring it around. And this really does help, just pulling a little bit of tension on the material while you're cutting that remaining piece out. Helps it come out a little cleaner. So you'll see here that we have some frayed edges. Kind of makes it look rough. Obviously it's not always gonna cut perfect as your blade gets dull or if it is a little soft still. But if you just hit it with the heat, you'll see that stuff shrink back up. You can kind of press on it with your fingers and it cleans up those edges. All right, so for the stock piece, I'm just gonna lay it up along here, work my way around the other side. Just kind of Hit it with heat as I go. So you just want to lay it in, make sure you're centered, you have enough material to cover both directions. And you're just looking for a natural place to seam it. So this little ridge right here works good for me. Set the material, just use your fingers. Okay, so I've worked around the opposite side now. I'm just gonna start tucking the material and using the heat to press it into place. And then just like I said with the, the forehand, we're gonna press it where we want it. And then we're gonna let it cool and start trimming stuff off to get to our finished product. And it's really important to make sure you're using sharp blades. Don't be afraid to change them out. Make sure you have plenty of extras to work with because that's, that's gonna help you end up with a cleaner install. And it's less of a fight. I'm going with the heat gun at this point. It's kind of like adding a, uh, a shotgun blast of heat as opposed to that pinpoint that you get with the torch. It just kind of spreads the heat out more evenly. So I can kind of heat the whole area and then start pressing on it with that foam to get it where I want it. All right, so now the material's cooled. I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming all these edges and just working on the detail work. You just wanna angle your blade away from stock and 
run it up in there. That way. Same thing through here. We're just going to take this center piece out. So we have our fore end all trimmed up, the butt stock's all trimmed up. So we're going to move on to uh, post heat and we're going to use the heat gun and we're just going to work the whole gun over and over. We're going to get it good and hot and just work on pressing the material into the surface. And this really sets it, what, what gives the skin the longevity and really that protective nature that we're going for as well as the look is that post heat. You just want to take your time with it. Any of these areas where you trimmed out and it's a little frayed, you can put a little extra heat there or you can use a torch and hit that and it'll suck up in there, clean up those edges. Along these little ridges here, you can use your squeegee. You got one to kind of tighten that up. Just really work on detailing things out. On the grip, this is where you're going to finish off bringing that texture through. Just put a lot of heat to it. Keep putting pressure on it. So here's our completed AR-15 skin install. Thanks for watching. Wrap up your guns and gear, camouflage it all out. Gun skins is here, flare gray, shipping that's right. Five dollar, five dollar. Fully loaded, guaranteed to make you holler. If you ain't happy, get your money back. AR 15 skin, it's where it's at. Mac wraps pistol skin, give me two or three of that. Install it yourself, it's so easy, yeah. Get yourself a gun skin, have fun with it, get yourself a gun skin. Have fun with it, made in the USA Waterproof, matte finish, five year warranty They done did it, gun skins